Indiana has the second highest infant mortality rate in the Midwest following Ohio. One organization aims to decrease infant deaths by focusing on infant abandonments. Parents Bruce and Shelby adopted their daughters in 2022 through different avenues, one of which was from a safe haven baby box. Benta Boutier reports. Oh, you should do your song. Oh, <laughs> it's Wednesday evening at the Fultinski's house in Mishawaka, and the family is working on homework and eating an after-school snack. You and Daddy to cut you an apple? Okay. Bruce and Shelby help their 10-year-old Kaya go over her weekly Bible verse to memorize for school. Those who have been brought from death to life. That's a long <laughs> They fostered Kaya three years ago before adopting her in March 2022. A month later, on a trip celebrating the adoption, they received a call asking if they would want to adopt again. This time, it was a baby surrendered to a safe haven baby box at a hospital in Lake County. When we adopted Kaya, we had to have a license, um, not just fostering, but foster to adopt license. And so when we... Um, had that, I guess, then we were put on a list. Neither Shelby or Bruce were familiar with the safe haven law or boxes. Indiana allows someone to surrender a baby under 30 days old anonymously to a hospital, fire station, or other emergency medical professionals. We were just enjoying that, realizing, you know, God had answered our prayers and allowed us to have our families complete with uh, Kaya. Yeah. And uh, when they were contacting us about the safe haven baby, bo uh, baby um, we didn't even know that we were on a list. The initial call was just for an interview, and Bruce and Shelby figured their chances were slim. Their original family plans didn't include adoption, but that shifted after difficulty with fertility. We were like, well, surely, you know, I'm sure hundreds of people are probably interviewing, right? Uh, surely we won't. Um, uh, but again, we were just so surrendered that we, you know, went ahead and took that, that step of faith, and we had a interview mm -hmm. and um and yeah then just a few hours later they called us after the interview and said that they had chosen our family when i was coming home from school when my mom picked me up and she asked me do you want a baby sister and i said yes her new sister, Maya, stayed with a foster family for a couple weeks. The goal with Safe Haven Children is to place them with their adoptive families within a month of being surrendered. Five months after getting the call, the Fultonskis finalized the paperwork to adopt Maya on November 23rd, National Adoption Day. Maya was less than 24 hours old, wrapped in a towel when she was surrendered to a baby box in Hammond. Children surrendered first go to the hospital for medical care. The adoption is managed by the Department of Child Services or an agency. The Indiana-founded nonprofit Safe Haven Baby Boxes aims to make that process as safe as possible by helping parents surrendering an infant remain anonymous. But our program is, will you walk into a fire station and hand this child to a person? If they say yes, then we'll do the legwork for them. We'll call the location, let them know they're coming. We will walk alongside her as she goes up there, making sure that she feels comfortable doing what she's doing. If she won't walk into a facility, then of course we're gonna give her the instructions for how to use the baby box. Kelsey started the nonprofit in 2015, installing the first boxes in 2016. Safe Haven has a hotline and a licensed counselor for people considering options for their newborn. Kelsey says nationally they received 187 calls in January. Whether it be a safe haven surrender, whether it be an adoption plan, whether it be a parenting plan. You know, we want to make sure that these parents are choosing what they want to do. When a baby is surrendered, Kelsey holds a press conference thanking the parent and assuring them their child is safe. Kelsey says they often hear from that parent afterward. She added many people who called did not tell anyone they were pregnant. If she's watching, which most of the time they are, they call us. They get their counseling, they get their medical care. Remember when she could only say daddy? Mm -hmm. There was a season of that? There was. Oh. That was really nice. Bruce and Shelby are grateful to Maya's mom. They start their day early, getting Kaya to school and caring for Maya, who is nearly two. I think the biggest thing, our hope, is that the girls would know that they're loved. They have, uh, you know, two moms and two dads uh, that cared for them um, in different ways. And uh, their, their birth parents are part of their, their life and story. Um, so uh, 
just to know that, you know, they are loved and cared for. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Ben Taboutier.